Good day YouTubers and welcome to yet another new season of Travels by Narrowboat. You join me near Great Haywood Junction in the grounds of the quite fabulous Shugborough Hall. The estate was once owned by the Bishops of Lichfield before being purchased in 1624 by William Anson. The estate remained in the Anson family for three centuries. Following the death of the 4th Earl of Lichfield in 1960, the estate was allocated to the National Trust, who still own Shugborough Hall to this day. The ancient monument of Essex Bridge spans the River Sow as it joins the River Trent, winding its way from Stoke. The village of Shugborough once stood in the grounds of Shugborough Hall. However, later generations of the Anson family grew weary of having to share the grounds of their house with the locals. To that end, the Anson family constructed two rows of terraced houses on the other side of the canal in Great Haywood, then evicted the residents of Shugborough village and razed the entire place to the ground. Today, no trace remains of Shugborough village. The Anson family were none too pleased about a railway line being constructed near their property and insisted that if they had to travel under a railway bridge in their horse and carriage, it should at least be a decorative one. From the farm shop, I got a couple of their sausage rolls. I've forgotten what they are, but there's basically like cranberry and apple or something like that. And I think there's a, a cheese or something. Oh wow, this is so very moist. Mm, bit of sausage here. I'm sad to say, I think these have knocked Hamlet sausage rolls off the top spot. Rather like at Skipton, when I discovered the locally produced pork pies and they knocked Wright's pork pies off the number one spot. Wow. Well now at Great Hayward Junction, it's time to get this show on the road. Yes. Have you heard the tale of Aslan and the Gent? Have you seen their travels before? 
know that they're back again and cruising the canals once more. Sold up, downsized for a minimalised alternative life afloat. Going boldly where thousands have been before, one man, one life, one boat. Leaving Tixel wide on the Staffordshire Worcestershire Canal, where I spent Boxing Day and the 27th and 28th of December. Heading the quarter mile or so up Staffordshire Worcestershire to the junction at Great Hayward. It's only the 29th of December, but at times there's this sudden feeling as though springs in the air and then the bitterly cold winds return. Crossing over the River Trent and a junction at Great Hayward and I'm going to be turning right but firstly I'm going to quickly turn left and stop at the water point Ah, great, it's full. Um, but I'm keeping an eye on that boat at the end there. They look like they're going through the motions to get going. But if not, I'll just moor up to one side. Now nah, scrub that, I don't really need water anyway. All the water waiting points were full up, so I thought I'd pull over and wait, but as soon as I did, a boat left, and then another one turned up and took the space. On to the first lock then, which is just around this corner. And the good news is, that for quite some way they're all downhill.
just one more lock after this one and then no more locks for about seven miles. And in season nine, I'm going to be continuing down the Trent and Mersey Canal. Through Rugeley, where I discovered the home of Wright's Port Pies back in season one. After Rugeley, we pass through Armitage and Hansacre. And then three locks which drop us down to Fradley Junction. There I'll be turning down the Coventry Canal. Past Whittington. And for a short while the canal turns into the Birmingham Faisley Canal. Soon becomes the Coventry again. Past Faisley Junction. And Tamworth. And Atherston, where after having only owned Aslan for two weeks in season one, one of her injector pumps failed and I was stranded there for eight days. After Atherston we pass through Nuneaton and then arrive at Marston Junction where I'll be turning up the Ashby Canal which is said to be very beautiful and it's 21 miles long and no locks. Well, today I'm going to get to Rugeley, which is about four miles away. Well, it's about three and a half now. Main reason being, I'm sick to death of shopping in a tiny spa. I want some real milk and uh, a decent latte. The River Trent follows along for pretty much all of the canal now and continues all the way down to Sawley Junction where I arrived at the end of season five. But of course I approached it from the other way, down the tidal and non-tidal Trent. Colwick lock up ahead and that's the last lock before Rugeley about two and a half miles away.
Well, look at that, eh? A boat's coming along, so I haven't got to get off and close the lock. Passing Colwich, and as I said in a previous video, I've done a couple of the canals which I'm going to be travelling along, but not in this direction. Nor have I done the Ashby Canal before. Two and a half miles to Rugeley then, which is where I'll moor up for the night. just been asked by a passing couple. They said, did you just take a video of our house? Oh, oh no. But they just wanted to make sure that I had taken a video of the house. Lovely sunshine. There's uh, something quite right about this way of life. It's uh, I was reminded uh, by a comment a viewer left about uh, the Rush song Red Barchetta, and particularly the line about the 1950s historic petrol-driven sports car, the Red Barchetta was a sign and a symbol of a better vanished time. I think that sums up the canals for me. It's a better vanished time. Except they're still here. But uh, you get my drift. I think the way things are going, well, who knows? I don't particularly fancy a uh, battery powered Aslan. Maybe I'd have to put some kind of PA speaker on the top playing the sound of Aslan's engine. And a couple of, before anyone says anything, a couple of little smoke pellets as well. Fishton Hall, now about a mile and a half to Rugeley. I remember this place. I also remember that this is approximately the area where I passed a boat, where I could hear without a shadow of a doubt that the couple on there were engaged in whoopee.
now a mile or so to Rugeley. And the wind's back. Been very lucky with the weather. When I woke up this morning, the forecast was rain all day. And I thought, oh well. Can't do much filming in that. And then it suddenly changed about an hour before I left. So I thought, right, I'll go for it. And I'm glad I did. It's been lovely. The A51 briefly appears, and then just one left-hand bend, and it's the visitor moorings at Rugeley. is directly in front and visibility is uh, almost zero but I shall bravely struggle on over the River Trent and then a left bend which is there but you'll just have to take my word for it About 50 yards along here, there's the visitor moorings, and I'll pick a spot, preferably not under a tree, and that will do me for today. Rugeley is one of the few towns that I'm happy to moor up in. Uh, Garstang would be another example, uh, Skipton, and it's all down to how the local population engage with their canal. If they see the canal as a place to drink, take drugs, then it's going to suffer. But if they see it as a place to enjoy, walk along and so on, then uh, that's reflected in the atmosphere. Greg's all right. Oh, the agony of choice. Morning, ladies. That's another new year I've managed to survive. This wasn't in the itinerary. All quiet on the toilet front. <laughs> 